four common reasons a home falls out of escrow and my advice on how to avoid it. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Samantha Perlman and I'm a realtor located in central New Jersey. Every week I post videos about what it's like to live and work here and guidance on buying, selling, and investing in the area. If this is something that interests you, consider hitting that subscribe button below and the bell so you don't miss the new videos I release every Monday. If you're watching this video, congratulations, you're probably under contract with a buyer. And you might be thinking to yourself, oh my goodness, what are all the ways that I could actually lose this buyer and fall out of contract? Unless you're under contract with a unicorn buyer, that would be a cash buyer that wants to close really quick. They're taking the property totally as is. They're not conducting inspections. They're not conducting appraisals. They're not asking for any repairs. They're not getting any financing and maybe they're not even doing a title search, although that's rare. Unless you have that unicorn buyer under contract, the chances are you've got some steps in your process that could put your home closing at risk. So let's talk about the four most common ways a home falls out of contract. Number one, home inspections. Here in New Jersey, every resale home is an as is home subject to the buyer's right to conduct a home inspection. They're allowed to inspect the home for possible defects in the structure, foundation, roof, the systems like plumbing, electrical, HVAC, hot water heater. If you've got a pool, a septic system, well water, all of these things, they have the right to inspect. And if they come up with any defects that are beyond the scope of what they're willing to take on as a defect and beyond what you're willing to repair as a seller, that could put your home's closing at risk. In fact, I've made a whole series of videos about the home inspection process. What is it? And tips for both the buyers and the seller side. I'll include a link to those videos below. Go ahead and check them out. Number two, the home appraisal. Chances are your buyer's most likely going to be getting financing. In fact, according to the National Association of Realtors, the majority of buyers that get financing on the home finance up to about 90% of the purchase price. So the appraisal is very, very important. It's important that your house appraises correctly. It must appraise either to the contract price or above in order to ensure the buyer's financing. Now, certainly if it under appraises, there are some options. You can challenge the appraisal. You can renegotiate the price. You could ask the buyer to bring funds to the table or use the seller can agree to come down to the appraisal price and move forward with the deal. I've also made a video about what to do when the home appraises is too low. I'll link that below as well. Number three, title issues. If title issues aren't handled quickly and effectively, they could put your closings home at risk. Now you might be asking, well, what would come up at a title search? I don't understand. See, it's important you as a homeowner to understand any liens or encumbrances there might be on the property. Is there a mortgage, a first mortgage, maybe even a second mortgage on the property? Is there a home equity loan? Um, is there anything you did to the property, any upgrades or updates that you've done to the property that maybe you didn't pay in full, um, such as a new roof or new HVAC system? You may have done these updates and you may have gotten financing on them. Um, also, solar panels is a big thing that could come up during a title search. So it's important to understand if you have any of those outstanding liens um, that could be on the property, it's, un it's important to understand what those are and how much it's going to be because you have to be able to dispose of all of those liens at closing. So the buyer can take ownership of the property with a free and clear title. One way you can also get ahead of this is talk to your listing agent about whether or not they have a title agent in their corner that can run a preliminary title search for you. This can be done before you even go on the market to know if you've got anything out there outstanding that you may not know about. Number four, the buyer's financing falls through. This can happen despite everybody's best efforts to properly vet the buyer and their qualifications, sometimes the buyer just can't get the mortgage. There could be a variety of reasons. It could be that the original loan officer or lender did not really do their pre-approval properly. And despite your listing agent's best efforts to validate the qualifications, there's limitations to what they can and can't know about. And they're certainly not a mortgage expert, so they can't make the final decision about whether or not a buyer is qualified. They really are relying on the lenders to be able to do that. So if the lender or loan officer did not properly pre-approve the buyer, that could put their financing at risk. There's also cases where maybe the buyer's situation has changed. Maybe, unfortunately, they've lost their job or something has happened that has changed their credit. Maybe they got overexcited and were not properly educated on the fact that maybe they shouldn't be buying a new car or taking on a new credit card throughout the process. All of those things that could affect their credit and ultimately their ability to get the financing on the property. These things do happen. I'm actually gonna give you a fifth way that you could lose a contract on your house. This is actually before the escrow is even opened. You see, here in New Jersey, we have something called the attorney review period. 
This is a period of time between when the contract gets initially signed and executed by both sides to when it goes to the attorney and before it's officially under contract. During the attorney review period, either side can cancel the contract without any uh, reason and without any penalty. So you as the seller could get a better offer and end up canceling on your buyers and taking the better offer. Or the buyer could actually go out there and continue shopping and find another home that they like better and can cancel with you as the seller. So what my advice is, if you are um, selling a home in New Jersey, that you are not officially under contract until the attorney review period ends. And Aside from the two examples I just gave you of why a contract might be canceled during attorney review, it could also be canceled if either party tries to drastically change the terms of the contract. Now during attorney review, there's lots of things in the contract that do get revised and changed by the attorneys. Typically it's small things like instead of 10 days for inspection, they want seven um, and things like that. However, if either side, seller or buyer, decides that they wanna use this opportunity to change some of the major aspects of the contract, meaning they want to renegotiate the closing date or the purchase price, or now they want to add in a seller's concession that wasn't there before. These things could really derail um, the contract and it could actually get canceled before it even goes into escrow. This is just one other part of the process that you need to think about if you're buying and selling in New Jersey. I'm also going to give one last tip to you buyers and sellers out there. Something that could actually derail the closing without you even realizing it. My advice is that buyers and sellers should not actually communicate directly at any point during the transaction. Now I know that might sound counterproductive to have to always go through third parties for communication. Buying and selling a home is a very emotional process. And sometimes when a buyer and a seller communicate directly, emotions can run high, anxieties can inflate, and personal issues can get in the way. And what might have started as a very innocent conversation could really end up in a terminated contract. So please lean on the team around you, your agents, your attorneys, and everybody else to handle the communication for you so that nothing gets lost in translation. As always, thank you so much for watching and I really hope you found this information helpful. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and say hello in the comment section below. And if you know anybody that could benefit from the information I've discussed here, please share the video with them. My goal is to make the content you're looking for, so if you have an idea for a future video, please leave it in the comment section below. I'll see you next week.